Okay, hello. Um, so I'm going to try to uh, convince you or explain or tell you my desire as to why I want to set up a class like this. And uh, if you're interested, um, if you would join, that would be great. Um, I've designed here a platform which is kind of open-ended. All right, uh, It's not very expensive either. These parts are all this chassis I get from China. Uh, it takes forever, taking about eight to nine weeks per order. But I've got enough of them now to start a group of students. And um, what I'm trying to do is build a platform that allows for relatively infinite expansion and uh, so we can have lots and lots of fun. Um, it's going to be based on the Teensy. 3.1 chip, which is designed, um, I think the guy lives out in, in uh, Seattle area. I should look that up again. And this is fully Arduino compatible. Uh, it's a very, very powerful chip. It's got lots of analog to digital uh, converters. It's got lots of digital pins. It's got a built-in USB. We can program it directly. Uh, you don't even have to have any of this stuff, as you'll see in the first videos. Uh, to make this thing go, uh, we can run it just that little chip, stick it in a, the nose of a rocket, uh, and we can also then take this little chip and stick it into something a lot more robust down the road, like this board here, which allows us to use all the different IOs easily and power it and, and uh, still keep the footprint small and, and convenient. Um, we're going to start with just a breadboard. And it's going to take a while because I'm not going to have you just jump in and build a robot. That, that kind of defeats the purpose of the whole educational content of it. I want you to slowly add and add and add and repeat and repeat and do several different programming steps along the way. Um, for example, I've already uploaded a bunch of video. You can see it here on my site. It's going to be underneath the Teensy breadboard bot. And I'm already at almost three hours, uh, and the last video doesn't even, you know, I, haven't, I don't even have a robot yet, okay? I've got two motors sitting on a desk, and I think I've got over four hours of video shot uh, already, and uh, we still don't have a robot, although I'm getting close. Uh, once we get to the robot itself, there's going to be lots and lots of different incremental steps. Um, this robot is going to have some homemade sensors on it that you're going to have to make. Uh, not until after, though, I explain how to control them in the breadboard state. Uh, this robot is going to have an ultrasonic on it. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is make this ultrasonic work, probably just on the bench, and then, uh, then we're going to work on actually writing uh, libraries and subroutines. So we've got a lot of programming steps to go. Uh, I'm going to guess probably by the time I'm done, um, probably 8 to 12 hours of just video that's pre-programmed and pre-scripted that you can follow along with, each one its own uh, class, each one its own introduction, and uh, each one builds upon the other until finally we get to the ability, I'm hoping, that you can you know, program something like this on the fly. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be starting a virtual classroom. All right, I haven't started it yet. I'm hoping to get a little bit of the free time. I was hoping to find freeware version. Google had one launched that I was all excited about, downloaded, got ready to go. And then earlier this month they announced that they're dropping it and they're going to collaborate with another group from MIT. And the software they have isn't yet ready for prime time. Uh, yada yada being a big hassle. Moodle is open source. It's out there. It's great. A lot of people use it, but ultimately you still end up having to upload it onto some sort of server. My little uh, computer on uh, Comcast is not going to handle a classroom full of kids. Uh, you know, five or ten, whatever it is. It's it's not going to do it. Um, so I would have to rent a server. And I guess I've finally, finally decided that, you know, going with something like this and using their server is probably the way to go. And if I keep it at 10 students or less per class, 
then the cost is uh, fairly reasonable. So I'm going to launch this. What that means is that I'll be live uh, probably hmm, three times a week at different times that will be uh, uh, predetermined, perhaps a little bit of input from anybody who's, uh, who's taking the class. So for example, if it's a group of students that are all together and you're meeting at 3.30 on Wednesdays, okay, I'll take that 3.30 block as at least one opportunity per week to go live. So if you're having problems or questions, uh, you'll be able to interact with me right in front of the cameras, uh, see everything that's going on, and uh, we'll be able to build from there. The other thing I wanna do is if we get started by, for example, the first week in November, I'm gonna say probably the first week in December, I'm going to sign up for a room in the Trenton area at one of the local libraries, perhaps Ewing Library, I've used that one before, and uh, we'll have a sort of competition. Uh, for example, maybe it'll be a sumo battle. Uh, something that you know in advance, so you're going to have an opportunity to program it. The other thing that's going to happen on that, that given night uh, is I'm going to come up with a challenge to which you have no idea about. All right? You will have no predetermined, uh, no pre-programming abilities, and you're going to have perhaps 60 minutes to, uh, to rewire your robot, perhaps with some sensors that I may or may not bring. And uh, you know, you're going to have to figure out how to do it. So you're not going to be able to fake this. You're not going to be able to go down the road saying, oh, I'm going to do exactly what Brian does and just copy him because you will be totally lost at that point. You're going to have to actually learn what's going on or you will not be able to compete in the impromptu competitions. Uh, I hope to continue on. You know, my goal is to launch this now with a group of students and uh, perhaps again next month launch another class and the class that wishes to go on uh, after this first group of robots and first group of uh, competitions will probably take on some new controllers. I'm sorry, not a new controller. I love this controller. Uh, a new platform, maybe, maybe a motherboard like this, uh, maybe an audio player like this. This is an MP3 player that fits on here. Um, maybe some other type of thing and we're going to keep stepping it up. There's no reason why this can't go all the way up to a group of students competing at the Trinity Firefighting Contest, for example. Um, each, each grouping, each uh, cluster of activities and equipment will up the ante one more time and uh, we'll just keep getting better. So that's kind of my pitch. Um, and if you're interested, uh, you can send me an email or in the case of uh, PLC, perhaps talk to uh, your instructor and uh, we can figure out a way to make this work and uh, launch a, uh, a program. And uh, you know, maybe we'll even get, uh, what I'd just love to get is about eight uh, students, maybe, 7th to 12th grade, uh, eager to learn and build and construct. And uh, like I said, maybe as early as the first week of December, um, we can monitor how things are going. Maybe it'll end up being the first week of January. We'll uh, set up a time and we're going to have a competition and I'm going to give you an undefined challenge. You will not know what it is until you arrive. And I may or may not, like I said, provide you with additional equipment that you have to learn quickly how to use. So you're going to need to know the syntax, you're going to need to know the structure, you're going to need to know everything. So I'm going to end this and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye.